Okay, it's is that recording? Yes. Okay, it is recording. Okay. So how's your day going? My day is going good. Day's a very good day. You know, I'm one of them guys, I'm blessed when I wake up in the morning. That's good. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning, get on my knees and I pray. That's good. And I thank God for waking me up, giving me another day, and then I get busy. Okay, so starting with the interview questions, why have you come to the pantry today? Okay, I came to the, my story might be a little bit different. I, uh, I own some rental houses, mm -hmm. and a friend of mine, well he isn't really a friend, but a guy that I knew when I was in high school was sleeping in one of my houses. And when I came in, I seen him and I said, Billy Wright, what's going on? And he, he told me that it was his house, but it, he's kind of gone a little yeah. bit from drugs and everything. So he told me together, that's the name of this organization, mm -hmm. I believe, would pay his first month rent and his mortgage. Well, his first month rent and his down payment for the first month. And that's how I got involved with these guys here. I came down to inspect, and what they're doing is a great job. It's a beautiful thing what they're doing. Oxwise, this man would still be living out on the streets. That is pretty good. That's pretty yeah, good it's, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It really is because Oxwise, no telling where this guy would be at today. Okay, next. Okay. <laughs> um, how did you hear about the pantry? Well, from the guy from the that guy. was sleeping in my house, right? Yeah. And matter of fact, the house that he was sleeping in wasn't even ready for nobody to live in. I went in there to check on the house, and I went down in the basement, and he was sleeping on the floor. Oh. Scared shit out of me. <laughs> for real. <laughs> for real. It, it was kind of scary. I don't. I really don't know. At least you checked it. That'd be right. like awkward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to like, someone you moves know. into that house and you see that guy sleeping. Right. You know, I uh, also had a house on 4011 Worth Street. Mm -hmm. I went up there to check in it and the guy that I was uh, renting it to, I found him dead inside of it. Oh, yes. oh my gosh. Yeah, well, so, that is scary. Well, it wasn't foul play. They, they say he had a heart attack. Oh, so, uh -oh. yeah. Pretty, but I want to stick with you guys. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Um, so, when was your first time coming here? Uh, about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. Can I find my other questions? Do you um, have a family to provide for? Yes, I do. How, like, how many do you have any kids? I have five sons, one daughter. My, uh, I have. Three of them that went to Creighton Prep. Mm -hmm. uh, then two of them. Is, the school you, you guys are from is from up on Dodge up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 100. I had a son Dodge. that graduated from up there also. His name was Ahmad Johnson. And my son that went to um, to Creighton Prep was Titus Titus Adams. Mm -hmm. He uh, went on to play football for Nebraska wow. and got drafted by the New York Jets. Ooh. Ooh. And my, <laughs> right. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. And my other son, Jelani, that went to Creighton Prep, he uh, he played basketball and he went on to go to Bellevue. And uh, when he graduated from Bellevue University, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. When he graduated from Bellevue, the, um, the president there offered him a job there and he accepted it. And that's, and my baby girl, one daughter, she went to Marion. Mm -hmm. She graduated from Midland. And now That's she's cool. getting her uh, master's at uh, UNO. That's good. And she's working at the U.S. Bank right now. She was a basketball player, too. She got a scholarship to play for uh, Midland. Matter of fact, I was blessed. All of them was athletic. So <laughs> yeah, all I know. You were very had a lot of family. Of scholarships, and it was a beautiful thing, really. Yeah, you know? it's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. I told you my story might be a little different. Yeah. yeah. But I wanted to help you guys, so if I can. Okay, how did you get here today? I drove my drove? Uh, my uh, pickup truck. Okay, um... I have one. Okay. What are some stereotypes you see directed towards like the people you're trying to help? You know, there's a lot of stereotypes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. But the, the number one thing is that I say, people tend not to really care about each other no more. And I don't know if that's a stereotype or just the truth. 
do you ever look at anybody and say, I just don't like that person? Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Sometimes. I mean, yeah, be honest. Yeah, we have all judge that. too fast. And you know the guy that was out here, I'm sure y'all heard him over there making all that noise and the lady told me he needed to be quiet a little bit. Yeah. yeah. See somebody like him, I could have took him outside and worked him over, but that wouldn't have been right because mm -hmm. we know something mentally is wrong, so. Yeah. Being stereotyped, I just don't know. I think we all are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just what do you think is like the biggest stereotype that people put people in like poverty? What people like think of? I don't know, like the say biggest it. stereotype people have again with. Say it. <laughs> you say it. I can answer. It. I know. I got to the people the, who are in poverty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There we go. I couldn't do my brain wasn't it's going okay. as fast as It's me. okay, it's okay. For me, I would have to say when people just look at people not I don't know, I guess I gotta go to the racist part. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now that being, you know, I believe that racism and being stereotyped is pretty close together. You know? mm -hmm. I think if, if if people over here on this side of town have a little bit more opportunity, you know, like with most, you know, like when you talk about welfare, you know, you guys probably think welfare started when black people came on, but it started when the white folks came for, you know, the Europeans came, you know, they had special programs for them. And you know, it kind of helped them a whole lot. But then when it comes to the black folks getting a little something, don't get it. Now, I'm not using that for the excuse because you can yeah. get out and you can do pretty much whatever you want, but the game did completely change, though. Mm -hmm. So I think if we had a little bit more opportunity over here on the north side, everybody would be happy. You ain't got to worry about somebody coming yeah. out there messing with you. Or you. Because if you got to, if you if you full and got a full stomach, you ain't got to worry about nobody stealing from you, right? Yeah. Um, so that's what we're trying to get out of it with this like Dennis Voices of Hunger project. We're trying to get people to actually know what's like right. what's happening down in like these at these right. food pantries, like how people actually live yeah. in poverty. Like some kids at our school don't even know anything about poverty. Like. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've been, that's, you know, they blessed not to yeah. have to go through this, but I'm gonna tell you guys something. It's great for you guys to be out here. Make me feel yeah. good about y'all. Yeah. I really do. Because y'all actually care. If you didn't care, because I'm sure you guys ain't gotta be here. I mean, you're here because you wanna be here. Mm -hmm. And I believe you guys are gonna be blessed for what you do. Do you think your story will change the outlook others have on poverty? I think my views with you guys might help one of you. I don't know. Maybe. If it do, I, I did my part by coming over here talking with yes. you. Yes. I mean, your story has affected me. Like, I, well, like, thank you. even before, like, like, asking all these questions, like, learning about poverty has, like, changed my whole view and everything about how people live. Like, I barely knew anything about it, even though, like, I like have heard about things and like I see it. I'm like my mom works out is like is a principal at Miller Park and I, all those kids oh, are you from out Miller, not there. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> all those kids down there are like in poverty and it's like it's a it's a sad subject. Like no. and so I'm like glad that I am learning more about it. Right. Yeah. Now you say when you say at Miller, you talking about Miller Park Miller down Park. on Thirtieth. Yes. Oh, you right over in the middle of this with us then. Yeah, that's where my mom. Yeah. <laughs> But it's making you a better person. Yeah. So, uh, I feel like it's good to like get different viewpoints on everybody because my family had like some rough spots in the past and stuff like that. So it's interesting to see like how other people get through them and like, have hope in the world. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's something you would want the general public to know about this pantry? That that this pantry really helped people. Yeah. Matter of fact, when I came in, they asked me, was I hungry? Uh, and it and it kind of touched me because they asked me, and I know I'm, I'm real full, I ain't hungry. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing real, real good. But for them to ask me that, it, it made me want to help. Yeah. Matter of fact, I even asked them, could I volunteer to help? Yeah. Yeah. 
That's good. So it's helping, it really is. Yeah. Uh, your turn. So, um, <laughs> do you believe in improvement for the future? Oh yeah, yeah. We we there's some beautiful things that's happening. I mean, the, there's some bad things, but there's some good things going on too. And the good thing is, you guys, y'all really by what you're doing, you're the ones that's going to make things change. How old are you? About 17? I'm 16. Six. Wow. See, I'm 61 years old. I just seen a whole lot of stuff. And it really is, I believe, it's getting better. That's so good. Yes, it's getting better. Yeah. That's great. Um, do you have any like future goals? My for future yourself? goal. <laughs> my future goal is to um, to retire down in Florida. Uh, okay. Last summer I took my whole family down there. My sons, my daughter, mm -hmm. and their uh, husbands and my daughter's boyfriend. I took them to uh, Florida. We got a house on the beach and I loved it. I fell in love uh -huh. with Florida and I want to retire there. I want to get out. I don't want no more winners here. No. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Be on the beach. That'd be mm -hmm. nice. Okay. I think you answer pretty much all my questions. As a kid, did you even think you'd be... Oh, wait, you're not sure. <laughs> Never mind. What did you want to be when you grew up, when you were younger? Okay. When I was younger... Got to give you the truth. When I, I I was born in East St. Louis, Illinois. You ever heard of East St. Louis? Not St. Louis, but East St. Louis. East St. Louis is you you know like Omaha, Nebraska. You go across the bridge to be over in Council Bluff. Yeah. In St. Louis, you go across the bridge and you'll be over in East St. Louis, okay. Illinois. And in East St. Louis, Illinois, there uh, there isn't even police there. Everybody you know the strong survive there. And uh, matter of fact, when I was living in East St. Louis, I didn't even see white people down there. When I came up here to Omaha, it was the first time I seen white folks. So in East St. Louis, when I was growing up, I wanted to be uh, a gangster. Well, that's what I wanted to be. And when I, I when I came up here to Omaha, it was like we was like the Jeffersons. We had moved up in life. I mean, up here in Omaha, we had a house with well, we had three bedroom, and I have uh, fourteen sisters and brothers plus mom and dad was living in the house. Oh my God, that's but, so many siblings. But it was so beautiful. I mean, it was never a dull moment. Yeah. You know, fights broke out every day, but <laughs> I changed my mind about being. So, against it. So like the way you lived. Right. Up here in Omaha, yeah. things were just so much better. Your perspective just changed so yes, much. Yes, it did. That's yeah. good. Um, like, if you had to pick, like, what people in your life have supported you, like, supported you the most? Well, of course, my mom mm -hmm. and my oldest sister and um, Ross Morello. Mm -hmm. He was, um, my dad's best friend, he was my godfather, and he the one that always told me, uh, Jerry, only dumb people go to jail. That's when he came and got me out, and he told me if I go back again, he wasn't coming back no more. And I believed him. That's good. Yeah, and I never went back to jail again. That's good. Mm -hmm. So, how would you describe the circumstances or conditions you grew up in? At the time, I thought it was normal, but as a man, we didn't have a lot of things, but we had a big family and everybody loved each other. I mean, my brothers, and so, matter of fact, right now today, once a month, our family have a family dinner. One month, one day out of the month, and all of us get together and it's at least about 75 or 80. Of you know, because the kids got kids now. Yeah. Well, so, uh, Matter of fact, I have a nephew that goes, well, no, she don't go up there no more, but uh, their last name was Frazier. No, don't know no Frazier, don't even worry about it. They but they went up there, yeah. 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 Okay, um, did you grow, hold on, oh, sorry. Yeah. Did you, yeah. like, grow up in poverty then? Yes, I, I grew up on uh, 30th and Seward. 
So, yeah. from growing up in poverty, like now, when you had your own children, did you try to provide them as many things as you didn't get when you were little? Right, right. And um, <laughs> it's kind of funny a little bit because, you know, as a parent, you always want your kids to do better than yeah. you. You know, you don't want your kids to want for anything. Mm -hmm. And I did that. And. Okay, I'm gonna bag up a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving it to you straight. I mean, I, you know, I worked down at Robert's Dairy for 32 years. Yeah. And when my kids was going through school, you know, all of them doing well and. <laughs> I gotta show you this, okay? One minute, I'm gonna shut this off for a minute. Then you could understand more of what I'm trying to get across to you. When I was. Um, Raising my kids, I wanted them all to do good, like any other parent would. And my kids didn't want for anything. Let me see. Okay. That's my my sons and my wife. My wife is right next to me. I married a Caucasian woman. So, you know, back then, times was kind of, people wasn't really down with that. But, uh, in a way, my three oldest sons that went to Creighton Prep mm -hmm. did great. And then I, my son named Ahmad, he went up to your school up there. And uh, I got a telephone call that um, that his car was in, uh, in a robbery. Yeah. So I um, went to the police station, got him out, he went to court. And he, of course, you know, like a parent, it ain't my son's fault. Yeah. Um, he was just with bad company. But after we got went to court and everything, found out he was the one he plotted it, schemed it and everything. So he did about 12 months. And then when he got out, I got him a job working with me. I gave him a, a, one of my rental houses to live in. And um, he was with uh, a guy named, you ever heard of a guy named Thunder Collins? He played Nebraska football too. We knew him from Titus playing there. And the uh, rental house I gave to him, they had some guys coming in from California and uh, they killed him in the garage. So my got, they, you know, anytime somebody lose their life doing a, a robbery, everybody is charged with murder. Yeah. So I had to get him up. So happened I was, I know a, a judge and the judge knew what lawyer to get and the lawyer told me, well, I can get them to drop the murder charges for $30,000. You know, that's the, to yeah. get the lawyer to work. So I gave him the 30 and it, 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 everything worked out good. He got eight to 12 years and he's out right now. He actually did about two years. And I'm saying that to say that all this time and effort I've given them everything that I could give them and he still went out and yeah. did that. Why I do, I do not know. Everybody else did great though except, well he's doing good now though. He has his own business and he's married now but yeah. sometimes you can give them everything. Yeah. And, and then sometimes they just associate themselves with the wrong people. That's right. And they're with them at the wrong times. Right, yeah. Which but, that affects him. Yeah, but he did this and knowingly what he mm. did. But he didn't pull the trigger though, but he yeah. was with him when it happened. Though. Yeah. Yeah. At least he's better now. Yeah, he's better yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. So that's the only trouble I had in my life with my kids with just him. Just him. Yeah. Um, going back to like the clients that come to the country for food, do you think it's important to have like a counselor or somebody that kind of talks to them and oh, yeah. them figure out what's yeah. going on? Yeah, that's a good thing. Yes, they need somebody to talk to. Because most of the people that's coming here, they need help. And, and I would have to say at least 60% of them ain't dealing with a, a full debt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't answer. Okay. Can I kind of just answer all my questions? Oh, here. Do you have mine. a bigger sister? Yeah. What's your sister now? Born Beach. Okay. Well, the reason why I asked you that, you look like a, a did, you, did she go to Marion? Mm -mm. Okay, wrong person there, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so since there's other food pantries like all around, 
in Omaha. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick this one to go to? The reason why I picked this one is Billy Ray, the guy that yeah. I found in my house, mm -hmm. told me that this place here would pay his first month rent and deposit. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up here. I had to come here to fill out the papers for it. Oh, that explains it, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. What do you think drew him here? Yeah. Food. Yeah. He came here to get something to eat. And I believe, see, he was homeless. He didn't have nowhere to go. And I guess somebody guided him here. And when they, he got here, they took care of him. <laughs> what are some improvements that could, like, could be done to better? Wow, I really don't know. I don't know what they could do to improve this. Yeah. Maybe more money. Mm -hmm. Money always helps. More like attention to bring to help provide. Right, yeah. Um, Do you think if they, like, if this is more open and, like, people knew more about this, it would, like, there would be more help down here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Because I've been here, you know, for over 35, 40 years, yeah. and I didn't know this was here until a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We just need more voices right, in the community. Yeah. For yeah. Us. Okay, yeah. So do you think people feel like not accepted from like society or like ashamed or like are ashamed to come here? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I don't think I don't think shame got nothing to do with it. These people is hungry. Now, you get your stomach get the ground, you gonna go get something to eat. Yeah. You come here, you gonna go steal it from somebody. That's just how it is. Yeah. Going back to your like childhood, like, do you think if you if there was things like food pantries when you were younger, do you think it would help you help you like would have helped your family? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. But uh, like I said, with my family, we was happy. We yeah. weren't mad or yeah. nothing. We was, because there were so you, many of us. Yeah. My mom had us one after another, mm -hmm. say so. And, she, and I don't know how she did it, but we always had food. But then as, as I look back on it, we was uh, semi-vegetarian mm -hmm. back then because really what we ate was greens, cornbread, yeah. peas. We didn't eat no meat except on Sunday when you had chicken. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say semi. Yeah. Chicken was there. It wasn't no red meat we was eating. I didn't eat no red meat till I till I came to Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, they eating good up here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> How old were you when you came here? Oh, I think I was probably about 11, you know, something like that. What moved you, like, what moved you guys? Um, My dad here. moved up here because back in the 60s, uh, Omaha was big on the packing houses. Yeah. So he came up here for a job up here, and he got on at the packing house. So your whole family moved? The whole family and a couple cousins. Yep, and... Uh, like I say, it was real. This I guess Omaha changed me. Yeah. So when I got up here, it just I couldn't believe it. And the white people wasn't. You see, you know, thing we knew. I well, my family knew. Matter of fact, my mama used to tell me, "This really ain't got much to do." But this, my mama always say, "Now them white folks, you stay away from them." Now she used to tell it, but that worked for us because we didn't mess with them. You yeah. know, we just kind of stayed away. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, because white people was mean to us. I know. You, know what you I still mean? get those people like today. That's right. I mean, and if somebody mean to you, you, you stay away. You stay right, away you, from you, you try to stay away from them. Because or all oh, hell will break loose. Yeah, because you don't know. You yeah, know, and, yeah. and believe me, I I have met some great white people. I mean, beautiful. Mm -hmm. But it only take one bad one to yeah, get you. Yeah. yeah. So take one that still lives in the That's right. 1900s. What do you guys think? One question for you guys. What do you guys think about Donald Trump? And be honest. Oh, oh no. 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 Uh-uh. Well, <laughs> he got I some good ideals though, don't he? I don't like. I don't get into politics because I like barely know anything about it. But right. what he says and like things he say, mm -hmm. like he could say, like if he was the president, he says he says such random things. Like what if he says the wrong thing to the wrong That's leader right. of a country? That's right. That's I think true. some of the things he, he just kind of pushes some things. Cause 
I've heard random things that he said. I just can't believe that someone running for president would try Not something. for president. You would think somebody for president would be bigger than that. Yeah, or not smarter on, than that. Yeah, not someone who hosts who tweets like, like talk shows. Right, like, yeah. Like a yeah. I can get away with right. this if I do this. Right. It's just like, it shouldn't be But there's there. a lot of people that believe him and yeah. want him in there, though. Mm -hmm. People actually That's scary. vote for him and then say, right. Hey, yeah, you I don't got to live here, honey. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right. but still. Yeah. You, you get to go away in May. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to live in Omaha anymore. <laughs> yeah, but still scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because like the United States, they affect so many countries. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just scary. Where are you from? I'm from Germany. Germany. Okay, well, welcome to the States. <laughs> Thank you. How long have you been here? Since August. Since August? Have you been enjoying it? Yes. Do you like I it? I really like it. Will you stay? I will stay to like June. Oh, you getting out of here as soon as you can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the All right. I'm just here for an exchange. Years. Oh, an exchange student. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I'm pretty sure I'll come back. Good. Yeah. I need good people like you. That's right. We yeah. need help over here, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> well. Ugh. Okay. That's pretty much it. Okay. Y'all want to know? You want me to send Gary back here? Now he uh, he's having it pretty rough. He probably can answer a lot of your questions better than me. I mean, if we have time. Yeah, I think we're supposed to be interviewing yeah. We I mean, do you need you to sign this, though, I think. Yeah. You want me to sign it? Yeah. Okay. He probably would have to so. I can go ask this real quick. Where am I sitting? I ain't got my glasses. I can't uh, see that. Put your name right on signature. top. I'm going to yep. put my name on here and I'm going to let y'all do the rest. <laughs> Yeah. Thank, okay. you, sir. Thank you very Thank you much. Nice meeting. Nice meeting. Nice now you're from you UNO, right? No, I'm no. from Burke. Burke, I'm you're, UNO. Yeah. You're, you're okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you guys. Nice you're doing a great you. job. Enjoy German. Thank, Thank you. you. Is it the 20th yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Sorry about <laughs> no, that. No, you're fine. I didn't have an appointment, so it was okay. Wait, did he say he was going to get him? Mm -hmm. Okay. I know, it was like, that totally really threw me really off because like, you couldn't ask him any of the questions because he came for another yeah, person. Yeah. I was like, <gasps> I'll give him a comfy chair. Did he want your same group to be with you? Yeah, like he he said he had like the guy he came here like four or something. The, yeah, the guy who like led him here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe a friend that came with him. Okay. Together. Because I was well, gonna see if somebody else could. Yeah. Oh gosh.